Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Skylar. If you're new here, welcome. So it's story time Saturday and today we have, if you're an OG on my channel, if you've paid attention to like my little like sneak peeks, then you probably know that the story is coming and you're probably excited to watch it. But as you see this titled, I stole a car at 19 <laughs> and it's not clickbait, bitch. It's really not clickbait. I mean, so you're just gonna have to listen. <laughs> so let's get into the video. Before we get started, please like, comment, and subscribe because it really does mean the world to me. But yep, with that being said, let's get into the video. All right, so this story time takes place when I am 19. Now, a little backup story. You can also click in the eye you can also click the I or you can click the link down below, but I have a story time on my channel called I Raised Someone Else's Child in Las Vegas. Now, little backstory on that video. Basically, I was in a relationship. He kind of cling clinged onto my life and I ended up supporting this kid <laughs> and like literally being his mother. And I didn't really realize like I had a choice just to like boot him, but I'm a Leo and like when we care about someone, we kind of let them, with them walk all over us until it's like, I mean, eventually we, we snap and we like cut that shit. But so I ended up moving this kid down to Las Vegas because I was supporting us and I, it was winter came along. And even though I was like one of the most valuable employees at my job, I knew I was going to get cut to 35 hours because even the team leaders only would get 35 hours in the winter. That's just how things are in a small town. So I was like, shit, you know, five hours makes a difference when you were a fucking 19 year old girl supporting a fucking another person. Like that's literally a baby. And his gas tank was $70 in his shitty truck, $70 a tank. So like, I was taking care of a fucking large expensive baby. Like, but anyways, if you want to watch that full story, you can click the link below or click the I. But that's a little preface of what was going on around this time. But yeah, that's just a little preface of what was going on during this time. Now we're living in Las Vegas and we're actually living with my adoptive dad and his um, kind of prostitute wife. Uh, if you watch the videos, you kind of like have an idea, but we can get in more into that another time. But basically, I would have never, ever, ever really gone and lived with these people if it wasn't for me taking care of somebody else because I'm very independent and they put me through a lot of trauma and I'll get into it more, but I also have a video, you can click the I or the link below. I have my adoption horror story video where I was trapped in hotel rooms for a few years. I haven't gone too far into detail in that situation, but I do plan on making videos diving deeper into what that was like itself but these people are doing better off now and i knew that they've actually tried to like have me come live with them so many times and um, i'm just like nah you know i'm good i don't really want your guys' help you couldn't be there for me during my most developmental years of my life when you're supposed to be taking care of me so why as an adult do i need you to act all like high and mighty now just because you're like kind of stable because you have another kid that you care about more because it's your biological like small kid like no so now anyways we move down here and we start living with these people and we actually both get the same job <laughs> he didn't keep it as long as i did because he's a lazy little motherfucker um but we got the same job and it was my uh, adoptive dad did construction so he was like um like basically like the head person now so he was working at an amazon plant and we were putting together the pods. And this is also during the time where I got up to 225 pounds because this relationship was so toxic. It was really bad for my mental health. And I had to implant my arm. I've gone into that in the past too. So we're not gonna get, get on that topic for too long. But <laughs> um, you can also watch, click the I or the link below if you wanna watch the story time about how I lost 90 pounds now we're working at this like little amazon plant he didn't work there for that long because he was lazy and so basically his truck started making these squeaky noises and he was like oh like I really, i'm really gonna need a new car like he basically made it sound like this car was gonna like blow up out of nowhere and it was like my issue like we had to like pull together and get a new car like 
And so I'm like, and this relationship, by the way, was super toxic, physically toxic, mentally toxic, just the, the you know, honestly, super, 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 super toxic. But yeah, he said, we like, we need to get a car, blah, 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 blah. Now at this time, I don't even have my license. I am 19, but I couldn't get my permit. I don't know why quotation permit. I couldn't get my permit until I turned 18. And that's because when I did want to get my permit um, around 15, 16, 17, my, I lived with my adoptive sister and the DMV required a parent's guardian signature and she refused to sign it for me um, because she just didn't want anything to get in trouble. I don't think she would have gotten in trouble, but she just wanted to be safe, you know, which I understand. So I couldn't actually get my permit until I turned 18. But by the time I turned 18, I just got out of basic training. I'm like in my senior year of high school and I get kicked out of my house. So I have to live on my own. And so I'm living on my own, going to high school. I don't have anyone to teach me to drive, let alone have the time to learn how to drive. So in this relationship, I don't have my license. I don't really know how to, I don't know how to drive yet. And he says that we need to get a car. Like we need to get a car like soon. It's basically urgent as fuck. And I'm like, okay, oh shit, we really need to get a car. And so we start looking around for cars. He actually wanted to get like a BMW. He wanted to get a loan on like a BMW. Um, or he wanted to like, like, he was really, which I mean, I'm gonna have a BMW someday. Actually an I8 with butterfly doors to be exact. We were like looking at cars and like my adoptive parents were actually giving me decent advice. They were like, no, like you guys don't need to get a car, like on the, especially not a loan, like all this stuff. And so, but he was like, fuck them. Like, we're not gonna listen to them. And I was like, yeah, fuck them. <laughs> we're not gonna listen to them. Now, as they are really trash people, but during this time, they were a little bit better. Like they were trying to be better. Um, I don't have respect for them <laughs> anymore because we'll get we can get into that another time. But during this time, they were being like pretty. They were being decent people and they were trying to help us. Um, but he kind of turned us. Uh, well, he turned me um, against them even more, which I don't fully regret because like I mean they are still bad people and I can get into that in another time. But during this time, they were somewhat trying but he's like no fuck their opinion like we need to get a car so we started going to different dealerships and we came across so we finally find a car dealership and they see us as like a cute young couple who's probably gonna last who has you know two sources like he didn't have a source of income anymore but <laughs> The pace doesn't look like he did. He, okay, these two people have a source of income. You know, she was in the military. Like, they kind of see this as like a good scenario. So we get approved. And when he did move into my house, you know, because he needed a place to live because he's a little bum, he actually hated on my bed that wasn't even that old, but it was from Walmart and he set up and made his back hurt. So for his birthday that year, we got him alone on a bed when he didn't have a fucking job. So he was already in debt. My name technically wasn't on that bed, but we can get into that later. <laughs> you just need to know that. Um, my name wasn't on his bed, but he already had us in debt because he didn't like my bed and he didn't have a job. I was the only one in this relationship with a job. So now when we go to the car, when we finally find a car dealership, they see, they see us as like a cute couple. They see me as like someone who's in the military we had pay stubs from when he did keep his job so it looked like we had two jobs even though we didn't we started uber we were gonna uber eat together when we got the car so which we we started doing and i'll get into that but this dealership sees us as like a cute little couple you know i'm in the military we have jobs whatever they approve us and i my name is technically the one and then he's technically the co-signer co-signer i think that's how it was um, because my, you know, my name was a little bit better. I had a little bit better. So anyways, but we co-signed on this vehicle together and it's a high, 2013 Hyundai Elantra and it's black. Now we, you know, we got all excited. We had this car and he says, okay, we can start Uber eating. I'm still going to my work for a little bit. I ended up just quitting with him and I'm like, okay, like we'll Uber eat. And then he drove around, but I did all the work. Like he drove around and I would go get in the food. I would go hand it to the people. Um, and he just drove around. And we started doing that and whatever. And then and he, we always, always, always ate out. It was really, really disgusting. Like we, 
never grocery shop he didn't like healthy food like i really and i mentioned in the other video i really lost my identity in this relationship and i think that's a common thing that a lot of people have to deal with is they lose their identity in relationships and yo if you in one of those situations like that if you are fucking being used bitch guys use girls too like guys use girls for money no bitch it's 2021 we don't do no scrubs bitch so if you in a situation like this my suggestion is get the fuck out because that's your money like you know no 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 and also never ever 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 co-sign on a card because we're gonna get <laughs> we're gonna get into this shit we're gonna get into this shit never co-sign with someone on a fucking car ever unless you're gonna get fucking married like unless you're married or even then even then when i do get married bitch my money is mine and yours is yours i'm getting a fucking prenup and no i don't care if you're richer than me but chances are i'm gonna be richer than you bitch so that's how i'm gonna be from, from now on my money is mine and yours is yours. i mean you can give me some of your money i don't give a fuck like, you can pay for shit but my money is my money we keep that shit separate you you can pay for my shit if you want to i'm gonna buy stuff for you like i'm a nice giving person but i'm cutting i'm drawing a fucking thick ass line like this shit definitely taught me some good life lessons that's for sure we get this car whatever we start doing uber eats and i'm doing all the work for him you know and we're just like wasting the money whatever and he wanted to move back home to oregon because he missed he was just homesick whatever you know he <laughs> he didn't really see like a big city as like opportunity and like growth and stuff he was just like no i'm homesick blah blah blah, blah. like he didn't want to even driving around and, and doing uber while his girlfriend did all the work was just like too much work for him and like whatever so he insisted that we have to move back to oregon and so we had the car we did we had the bed because we moved the bed with his truck so we did have the bed we and then that was already in debt just in his name though so we had the bed we had this car and he actually was already like because we only like we were just doing our thing we already started getting like the car like it was kind of behind and like so we had the paper plate on the car still and when it came to getting it registered in the state like in las vegas and stuff i guess he was like oh no like this process is like too much or like whatever like he didn't want to get it registered in las vegas like I think i don't even remember why like i don't he just didn't want to get it registered there and so we he moved like oh my gosh this is so hard to explain <laughs> he didn't want to get it registered there so he insisted that we have to move it back to oregon um before so we could like before we get it registered in las vegas so that we could get it registered in oregon whatever he eventually the paper thing on it expires so he takes the truck plates from his truck and he puts it on it so if anyone were to run our plates the plates would go back to a 2003 chevy so yeah stupid as fuck stupid as fuck and we didn't have insurance on the car i mean i wasn't driving at this time i was just a passenger but i'm like oh my gosh and then we're thinking, you know, okay, how are we gonna move back? Are we gonna save a thousand dollars for a U-Haul and then like do all this stuff? Or should we just ditch this bed and bring pack everything in the car? And now, so we were kind of like, uh, should we keep the car? Uh, not honestly, like, should we keep the bed? Or because we are, it's already in debt, you know? And I felt like bad because I thought we were gonna be together forever because I was a dumb bitch at this time and I was like, in love but not really in love i guess i was just attached and at this time my like like self-esteem went down because i i was at i was at a really 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 low point in my life and so i was like you know i don't want you to have debt on your bed so let's not do the u-haul like let's just pay off your bed <laughs> let's just let's just pay off the bed that's not even in my name that was your decision Let's pay off the bed because you know we we don't want you to be in debt. Oh my god, I'm dumb. I am so dumb. And then, shit. and so we were selling a dresser. And the day that we're selling the dresser, we actually had gone to an arcade because arcades are like my favorite thing, and I wanted to go to one really bad. 
we have like a, a good a good date but honestly i think we were just i was just trying to like have fun with him i was trying to like have like make our relationship good again but it was trash it was doomed it was fucking trash bro and we had like a little arcade day i think that's a good time and then uh we we're about to sell a dresser and i remember glancing down at his phone and i saw a purple app with messages on it and i'm like what's that because i know what facebook is i know what twitter is i know what like instagram is that don't look like any of that shit what is that you know so I asked, hey, what is that? And he, you know, turns off his phone real quick. He's like, oh, it's nothing. And I'm like, like, I want to know what it is. I want to know what it is, bitch. And, um, <laughs> and he, like, is, like, like lying the whole time. He's like, oh, it's just the link that my friend Jack posted. I just clicked on it. I'm like, okay, then open it up. Let me see it. He refused. We went and sold the dresser. We're in the car, sitting in the car. And I'm like, okay, like, I want to see it. And finally, I grab his phone. And I see that it's called Hilly. He snatches his phone back. And I look up what Hilly is on Google and it's a dating app. And I'm like, oh, so it's a dating app. And like, I'm like, let me see it. You know, I want to see it. And he refuses to let me see it. He ends up choking me in the fucking car. I get the fuck out and I'm like, whatever, like have a, have a fun night. He goes off and Ubers for the night. And I end up, end up getting really fucking drunk. I ended up actually drinking myself drinking so much that i ended up in a hospital embarrassing but i know it fucking happened right so then anyways the next day after i get out of the hospital he is like literally being like a, he comes and tries to open the bathroom door at when i get back from the hospital and I'm, i close it on him because i'm about to shower and he goes okay like fuck you then blah, blah blah and i'm like we go down in the car and i'm like you know can i see the thing now like can i see it and we have a whole a little altercation again he chokes me out again and i'm gonna put up a screenshot and i showed this in the video about him too but like it's a screenshot it kind of shows what our relationship was like because when it came to an end i literally sent him a text about how i don't want to be hit anymore i don't want to be choked anymore like i shouldn't have to deal with this shit just because i say something back with attitude that you said or i bring up something that you did like i am like one of the most understanding people i like to have like like resolutions and good conversations but this motherfucker like is psychotic <laughs> um so anyways during this day um i like i end up finally getting the phone and i like seeing nasty shit he's disgusting <laughs> and then i break his bong little <laughs> fast forward we'll get into this part but actually i'll bring this part up later when he says something really psychotic about later on um that makes me very happy I got out of that relationship or else I would have ended up dead. But we'll get into that part in a minute. So anyways, break his bond, like we find out whatever. And then um, he was like laying down with me crying, whatever. Still want me to be with him. My um, adoptive dad's wife, so my stepmom was like, he can't be here anymore though. So like, if you're gonna stay with him, you have to move with him. Like, and so I actually told him to get the fuck out. I broke his bong, like after I broke his bong and everything, I told him to leave and I packed up all of this stuff and I told him I didn't want anything to do with him. Then about like, I was actually really savage that day. I hit up our fucking plug, got six carts and I was like, and they were all gonna be for me. And I was like, and he actually, he was honestly a fine ass plug. And he was, then he, he was like hitting on me and shit. Um, he's a real fine ass plug actually. <laughs> but anyways, I didn't do nothing with the plug. But anyways, um, I probably would have down the line. He was actually really fine. Anyways, um, <laughs> um, but I'm like, fuck that. I'm like not even feeling anything. And then later that night, like six hours later, I woke up from a nap and I was like thinking about my car and I was like, fuck, like uh, my name is literally on that car. Like, what am I going to do? <sighs> and I was like, like, whatever. I called him, I called him and I was like, like, what's up, whatever and like do you want to come back and he's like crying he's like yes i do and i'm like okay fine like you can come back really because i needed my car but also because i was like thinking about it i was like i'm really gonna be trapped out here in this city with these people who traumatized me like it was kind of like even though he was so shitty i was like i didn't want to feel like i was like back in the same situation like when i was like 12 even though it would have been a little bit better and whatnot, I just didn't want to feel like whatever. So I was like, actually like, come back. Yeah, you can come back and I'll pack my stuff and I'll, I'll go with you. So that's what we did. I packed up all my stuff 
and we traveled back to Oregon and um, his dad said that we could like stay with them or whatever. Now I knew motherfucker wasn't gonna get a job. Like I knew it was gonna take him a long ass time to get a job. And so I knew that I'm a valuable employee. I knew that I would get hired immediately at one of my old jobs. So I reached out to my manager at McDonald's. I was like, hey, can I go back? And she's like, oh my gosh, what size pants do you wear? Yes. And I'm like, ah, at that time I'm a fucking size 14, bitch. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> gross anyways no no shade to anyone that's size 14 i'm just saying like like not not my not you know like yeah anyways no shade i'm just saying like i'm very very happy that i'm not where i used to be so we live like 45 minutes away from this mcdonald's now we could have stayed in the bedroom but his dad gave us the option of having like a little trailer in the yard to have our privacy now i didn't really like that like i would have rather been in like a bedroom in the house but you know he was like, okay, yeah, I want privacy. So we were sleeping in a little fucking trailer in their fucking yard, bro. Like. <laughs> and I was working um, 45 minutes away. He would drive me to work with this illegal car with the license plate that didn't even match the fucking car. And I kept asking him like, okay, while I'm at work, can you go try to get it registered? Like, can you start getting on this stuff? <laughs> and um, which he didn't actually while i was at work every single day he would just smoke with his buddies in this little crappy like small town and try to hit up bitches that wouldn't even that would be like because i found these messages later on when we broke up uh i found like these girls are like don't you have a girlfriend like they're literally you're a fucking joke i wish someone would have came to me but apparently no one they knew he had a girlfriend but no one wanted to come to me about it but they thought he was a joke like they're like bro like so little do i know while i'm at work every day um trying to you know make these paychecks so we can like get back on a roll i'm waiting for him to get a job he's literally just taking advantage of being a, a bum and then on top of it every day after i get off work he has the audacity to have a little nasty attitude with me and then like when we would wake up in the mornings i'd like wouldn't be very happy i would like some occasionally bring up like the situation like can we talk about what you did but you know a motherfucker never wants to talk about what he's done so he's gonna turn that shit on you especially if he's toxic and like abusive he's gonna turn that shit on you and so like our relationship started getting really violent and his violence was getting like fucking ridiculous bro and so we're just doing this thing and then um actually like a week before i end up going to stay in the town um because we couldn't afford gas for the week until i got my next paycheck we'll get into that in a minute but the week before that happened uh, we're sitting at, it's a Tuesday. It's funny because I remembered the little details. It's a Tuesday and it's my day off and I'm sitting on the fucking trailer bed on my phone and I'm like waiting for him to get done playing his video games um, so we could do something for the day. Just on my phone, whatever. And then he loses his game. He throws the controller at the TV. It cracks a tiny part of the TV. And then he starts beating the shit out of his huge flat screen. And I'm yelling at him like, stop, like, what are you doing? Like, that's your TV. And his parents are in the yard. And so he comes over to me and he chokes me. He's like, shut the fuck up. Like, you're gonna fuck, like my parents are gonna fucking hear you. And then his parents do hear him and they're like knocking on the thing. And they're like, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And then I go into the bathroom. I call one of my friends. I'm like, bro, like, I'm like, this dude is fucking crazy. Like, he already does shit to me. Like, like, chokes me. Like, he doesn't hit me that hard. But like, if he could do that to the TV, it's just a matter of time till he really, really beats me. Cause he he would leave like he wouldn't leave like bruises on my face, and he didn't really leave that many bruises like punching wise. He only left like a couple a couple times punching wise, but it was mostly choking bruises and like that kind of stuff but whatever his like stepmom was talking to me and she's like you do you really want to be in this like she was really telling me like i should leave she's like do you want to be in this like think if you stay with him for five years what do you think he's gonna do to your guys's kids to think i would even if i would have stayed in that i probably would have had kids in five years that's disgusting <laughs> ew ew i'm not having kids until i'm 30 <laughs> um but she's like telling me i should leave whatever during this time my friend hannah actually 
there was a day I was gonna leave. I was like, was like, girl, like I wanna escape. Can you come here at one? She actually even came that day. I was gonna pack all my stuff and then like I hesitated and I was like, I can't do it. But oof, and <laughs> thank God this happened. Thank God we ran out of gas money because like we ran out of gas money until my my paycheck was coming. So he couldn't really take me to there and work because that's 45 minutes there and 45 minutes back. And so I was like, okay, are we gonna stay in town together for the week while I work or like what's gonna happen? And we just came to the decision that I was gonna stay at one of my friend's houses for a week um, while he stayed here. And so I actually ended up staying at one of my friends and we'll call her, we'll call her Gertrude. I started staying, <laughs> I started staying at my coworker Gertrude's house. Now, this girl's house, by the way, I, if I have it in my camera, I don't think I do because I lost my old iPhone with 13,000 pictures and videos and it's around this time. I don't think I do, but this this girl's house is so nasty that like we I have a video of me st stomping like down like clothes like we tried cleaning there would be pads all over the thing they had like three cats in this little apartment it was really gross and i had a lot of other friends i had many other friends but the thing was a lot of my friends either lived with their parents at the time or they lived with like their boyfriends and like they like whatever or i wasn't really close and i didn't reach out so the only reason i decided here was because it was my co-worker i figured it was really easy you know we would whatever and it was only gonna be for like a week and so I'm staying here, um, he has the car and whatever. I'm staying here. I send him this text, I'll put it up here again. And this is what ends, um, we end up breaking, like deciding we're gonna basically break up over a uh, text, right? And so I'm staying here and I'm like, okay, like what am I, <laughs> like I gotta get my stuff at some point. And so um, two, actually, I don't know if we were for sure, for sure breaking up or I can't remember, but I do know at some point I have like one of them drive me to his house actually um to like talk to him and that's when i pulled open his phone and saw actually i think we were gonna break up and then i went over there to talk to him i pulled up i checked his phone <laughs> i took it from him just to see and he before we made the decision to break up after i brought up the abuse and said like i wanted it to stop and we had a fight about that before that even he was already trying trying to cheat on me he were trying to cheat on me <laughs> because he could like he, yeah um i mean he was kind of attractive but like he was also a fucking scumbag so no one wanted to fucking be with i mean he probably did actually cheat on me i don't really know but um anyways i see that shit and i'm like okay yeah we're done done and so i leave whatever and then after that he still has the car and he has all of my stuff i started staying with this gertrude girl for a little while like a few weeks i think like a month actually and i was waiting to get my stuff now he told me i wasn't gonna be able to get my stuff or the car unless i had his name off of the lease and it's like you can't just get someone's name off of the fucking lease like you dumbass and you don't have the job bitch like i'm not gonna fucking let you keep the car because you're not gonna fucking pay anything and so i was like I made um I used a little Snapchat cutting tool. I made a fake email and I emailed myself this thing that looked like his name was off the car so that he so he I got all my shit, packed up all in the car, finally went and got the car. Still did not have my license though. So I had someone else. I had two friends, actually one of his friends and then my best friend Hannah. I had Hannah and his friend, and we'll call his friend Jake. We had Hannah and Jake drive the car down. One of them drive my car back. And then I had all my stuff. Now I had all my stuff and I had this car <laughs> that had fake fucking plates on it that went to his truck and that didn't have insurance. And I didn't even have a license yet. I didn't even have a fucking license yet. <sighs> and so I had this car for a while and I wasn't like really using it because at first I was scared, you know? And so I was just had my stuff in it. I would go into it to smoke and that was just that. And then I would drive it around occasionally, but I was like, at that point I was scary. So I would only drive it around a little bit and I would let some p friends drive it. And um, <laughs> we actually got pulled over after, <laughs> after drinking from a party. One of my friends got pulled over cause she was like not staying in the lanes. They ran the place and everything. I told them the whole story I, and the cops let me go. They were like, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Um. 
actually like I got let go three times without it registered, without my license, <laughs> and without insurance. God, I fucking love you. <laughs> Bro. So anyways, it gets to the point where I'm like, okay, like I'm paying, I'm like trying to get this car caught up and I'm trying to get into a place like, I'm going to just start teaching myself how to drive it because you know, I have to like, I have to teach myself how to drive it. So I do start learning how to drive in someone else's car a little bit, but then I start learning how to drive my own. I end up getting into a different place, whatever. I was kind of all over the place that summer, just like, you know, trying to get stable. Um, Cause before, this person, I was stable. I was in my own home. I let him in my home. And that was the that was the first mistake in the beginning, but also, you know, the universe does everything at the right timing to teach you the right lessons when you need to learn them. And y'all already know the spiel. So <laughs> start teaching myself how to drive the car. I started driving it around <laughs> illegally, just learning how to drive it. And then I find, I do get, I'm the one that actually goes and get it registered with the correct plates because you didn't need a license to do that. So I go and I get it registered with the correct plates because I'm not gonna have that shit. I get insurance on it for a little bit finally, but I still drove it around for a fat minute without insurance. And then uh, that September was when I finally got my license. So at that point I have my license and I'm working like two jobs and um, I'm trying to get it caught up. I actually cut off the insurance because I was like, it was my insurance was $400 a month. It was technically 380 but $400 a month because I'm a first time driver. I'm a female and it's a newer car, I guess. Like, I don't know, it was $400 a month. And so at this time, I'm just like really trying to get like my first months, last months, I'm trying to get like whatever, get all situated. And so, and I wanted to go to school at that point too. Um, <laughs> So I'm like trying to get it all cut up. I'm like, okay, let me, let me just ditch the insurance, whatever. And then I continue driving it, whatever. I get it. Um, actually, I, wanna, I wonder if I should save this, all this part for a part two. I like to get insurance on for a little bit. I cut off the insurance though. And then it's just me with the car. So now if you guys want to hear the uh, part two of me stealing a car at 19 and what happens to it, you're just gonna have to stick around my channel a little bit longer. It gets longer. <laughs> the story with my car does get a little bit longer, but thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe because it really does mean the world to me. And turn on those post notifications if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video. But I love you guys so much and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.